study today. And we got it. Thank you, Leo. Uh, welcome everybody today to uh, this, uh, what is it? Fourth webinar or third webinar in our series. I think it's fourth. Um, and today, Patricia is going to share with us um, the, the Q methodology. Uh, I am one of the people, I hope not too many people who returned way too late my Q analysis. I did it just 15 minutes in advance of this meeting. Uh, my apologies for that. Lame excuse for not having read the description of your invitation well enough that said return before 10 September. Um, <laughs> nevertheless, um, it appeared very interesting uh, to me what you were uh, asking for us, and I'm looking really much forward um, to your explanation uh, on this Q methodology and what we can do with it. So... Thank you everybody for being here with us. Patricia, I'll give the floor to you. And I'm looking forward to your presentation. Thank you, Yeah, I'm going to share it. Okay, so, uh, so thank you. And um, well, good morning, afternoon, evening, etc. <laughs> and thank you. Um, to everyone who is attending to this uh, learning exchanges uh, webinar series today. So I'm going to talk about the purpose of uh, use of Q methodology as part of the activities um, we have planned in stream two of our project. And I gave this presentation during the hybrid uh, workshop in Mexico last June. So I will talk again about, um, about this methodology and the basis of this method methodology. So maybe it would be a little bit re repetitive for those who were uh, uh, present during the workshop, but I will also present the results of the analysis of this beta version that we uh, are exploring during the, that we were exploring during this uh, uh, workshop. So here is a small remind, reminder that um, uh, part of the stream two activities includes a series of uh, workshops to discuss the, the concepts of transformation, pathways planning, transdisciplinary uh, research. Uh, and the objective of these workshops are to strengthen, strengthen sorry, the learning uh, network uh, between us and between the case studies and between disciplines. So the proposal here is to start uh, to, sorry, to, uh, by using the, the Q methodology to analyze over the five years or the, the, the rest of the years that we have on the project, changes in the way uh, our, us, the group of uh, TransPath plan, uh, conceptualizes frameworks and methodologies related to non-traditional forms of research. This is transdisciplinary research, participant, participative action research, and how these possible changes in our own narratives can lead to reconfigurations in the relationships, actions, capacities, and social uh, networks uh, among us. Uh, this is the, the proposal. Um, so, uh, sorry, I'm going to explain a little bit what is uh, Q methodology. So this is a method to uh, study the subjectivity of people based on human behavior by analyzing the perspectives that a group of people have on a particular topic. So this methodology helps to open up an issue and draw the different ways a group of people think about this topic. Uh, and this uh, method uh, does not look into uh, perspectives with an objective uh, and external variables like age, job, income, etc. But it tries to understand the subject's own internal frame of reference on this topic. Um, so when we do this method, we are kind of taking a snapshot of uh, the diversity of subjective perspectives around a given topic. 
topic and reveal this uh, subjectivity, um, uh, uh, which might uh, appear as technical debates, but uh, we can go deeper on the, the on the analysis of this subjectivity. Uh, so I'm going to show a short video that explains, and, uh, and then I'm going, uh, what is, and then I'm going to explain it uh, better. Do you hear it? No, okay, I, need, I think okay. I need to, to, to take off my, okay. People like to communicate. No. They have opinions on every kind of topic. And often they have shared opinions on the issues. One way to understand the variety of shared viewpoints on an issue is to use Q methodology. Q is a research technique that was developed by William Stevenson. In a Q study, all the participants individually sort a set of items, usually statements, along a scale according to how they feel about each statement. The way they sort the statements is then compared and contrasted to find groups of people with similar sorting patterns who share the same viewpoint on the topic. So to conduct a Q study, you need a topic and a research question. You need to build up a comprehensive set of statements relating to your topic. The statements should reflect all the different things that people might think or say about the topic. You can collect these statements from anywhere and even make some up yourself. As you collect your statements, eventually you will reach saturation point when no new information is being added to your set. You now need to reduce your statement set down to a sample that captures the essence of the full set. 40, 50, or 60 statements may be enough. There is no magic number, but the final set of statements should be comprehensive enough to allow any individual, no matter who they are, to express their own personal viewpoint on the topic. You will need to prepare instructions for the participants to follow when they sort the statements. And you need to design a response grid for your participants to sort the statements within. This is usually in the shape of a bell curve. You need to select people to act as participants in your study. Be sure to include people who are likely to have different opinions on the topic so you can capture the range of viewpoints that are out there. It is usual to begin by asking the participant to sort the statements into three piles. For example, agree, disagree, and neutral. The participant then resorts the statements in each pile according to their strength of feeling about each. This is a holistic task as the statements are ranked relative to each other. It's all about personal feeling from the individual's point of view. Once completed, it's also very helpful for the researcher to interview the participant after their cue sort, asking them why they sorted the statements in the way they did. The completed Q source and the participants' comments provide data for you to analyze and to interpret the variety of shared viewpoints on the topic. Now comes the number crunching. This involves a pattern analysis of your Q source data. In essence, this is a data reduction exercise. You will aim to reduce your Q source data down to a small number of shared viewpoints that will simplify and explain most of the variety in the participants' original Q source. To help you do this, you can use a dedicated software program. You need to enter all the participants' QSort data into the program. The software will compare all of the QSorts with each other and help you to identify those QSorts where different participants sort the statement in very similar ways. You can then construct a synthetic QSort, which is a kind of average of those similar QSorts. This new synthetic QSort represents a shared viewpoint. You can go back to the participants' interview comments to help you interpret their viewpoint. Finally, at the end of your Q study, you should have a better understanding of the variety of shared viewpoints on your topic and why people hold those views. You can find out more about Q from the official Q method website. It will point you to all kinds of information and resources, including books and articles, software, conferences, and online Q communities that you can join. Enjoy your cue. Okay, let me put again the presentation. 
here. So I'm going to um, go again through the steps uh, that were explained in the video. Hope it was uh, useful to watch it. Um, so recapitulating uh, what are the steps of this methodology. Uh, so the first one is to do a previous research uh, of this aspect of interest regarding a uh, research question. So that implies uh, looking into uh, bibliographic sources, different kinds, uh, consult experts on the subject, or maybe start with in-depth interviews uh, with the people you are going to work with to also try to capture these different um, uh, issues around a topic. So here we are, uh, well, I am proposing uh, this initial and um, possible research uh, question if we want to uh, do this uh, Q methodology uh, during our project. And the question is how much does the group agree or disagree on what distinguishes alternative ways of doing transformational research? Uh, we can discuss this later, but this is like the initial uh, uh, question. Um, the next step will be the design uh, of a set of affirmative statements that address different aspects of interest. So for example, these, these four um, statements that I have here is are the same that uh, we used during the exercise. So for example, uh, referring to, to these alternative ways of doing research, I have this, this statement to achieve a transformation of a social ecological system, it is necessary to intervene from academia. Or for example, transformations cannot be predefined. Could be, uh, or should be uh, simple and uh, uh, statements. Uh, and well, after having this uh, number of statements, uh, I'm going to Explain later how many do we need. It depends on the on how many social actors or participants we have on the Q methodology. But um, well, while doing this, we also have to select a diversity of social actors. Um, as uh, the video said, uh, should be as diverse as possible. And the idea here is well to apply this uh, to us. Um, Then uh, the next step is to provide the statements to uh, the participants so they can sort them accordingly uh, to which statements they must agree with, uh, those which they have a neut neutral opinion and, um, and those with which they must uh, dis uh, agree and disagree. Um, so ideally, uh, the statements should be arranged in this uh, pyramid shape to follow a normal distribution. But uh, I remember when we were doing this exercise during the workshop, we, uh, the, the question uh, of if we can do it differently uh, rose. So yes, we can do it differently. And we just need to, um, to modify a little bit the statistical analysis. Uh, but it is possible to not uh, constrain all the question, all the exercises like in the same uh, shape. And this is because, well, when we did this exercise, we just have this um, um, little uh, figure. Uh, so it was difficult a little bit to uh, decide uh, uh, to, where to put the statements. But uh, when we have more statements and a bigger Pyramid is uh, a little bit more easy uh, to um, to stay like with this shape. Um, then uh, once we have um, the Q sorts of uh, each participant, um, uh, we will have this uh, kind of a snapshot of, of, of their perspective on the topic in question. Uh, so uh, this in, in this moment, uh, this individual exercise will be uh, subjective in the sense that if the same person uh, does the exercise again, like one hour later or the day before, or the day after, sorry, uh, the result will uh, not be exactly the same. Um, so once uh, all the, sorry, 
once all the participants uh, queue sorts are available, available uh, we can perform a factor analysis uh, uh, to analyze the information. So this is a technique that is used to reduce a large number of variables uh, into fewer numbers of factors. Uh, this uh, technique extracts the maximum uh, common variance uh, from all variables and puts them into a common uh, score. So in this case, it's just to find clusters of shared visions or perspectives of an issue among the participants. And the analytical principle is the correlation uh, between individuals to find engagement or disengagement on a statement. And it uses a factor loading, uh, which is the correlation coefficient uh, for the uh, factor that shows the variance explained by the variable on that particular factor. <laughs> Sorry, I, I hope that was uh, clear. Um, so for this beta version uh, for our project and our group, um, we propose uh, nine statements. These, uh, I write them uh, together with uh, Lakshmi. And the idea uh, was to perform uh, the exercises well, during the workshop. And also that's why I also sent it by email to the ones that weren't in the workshop. Uh, so I can analyze all of uh, us, uh, but well, uh, for now uh, we have just uh, 14 participants. And these were the statements. So I'm going to read them um, just for you to, um, to uh, look uh, what we, the topics that we are uh, addressing the, uh, with this methodology. So the first is uh, to achieve a transformation of a social ecological system is necessary to intervene from academia. If a consensus is not reached, a collaborative process aimed at fostering transformations fail. Transformative process always require technological solutions. Academic biases can influence the direction of interventions that may or may not be desired by other social actors. A successful participatory process is measured by how many participants attended. Science has the ultimate answer to solve social ecological problems. The heart of such transdisciplinary research is co-constructing the project objectives from the beginning with the non-academic participants. Although we can play the type of transformation plan, sorry, the type of transformation we want to enable, we cannot know the real outcomes since the transformations cannot be predefined. And the last one, in general, the most profound transformations were triggered from social movements, not from academia. So these were the instructions that I gave you uh, during the workshop and also uh, by email. Um, so basically it's, it's very simple. Uh, it was it just gave the statements to the participants and asked them to sort uh, the statements with uh, following this shape and this uh, gradient uh, uh, to that most disagree, neutral and most agree with. Um, so these are the, I'm going to present the preliminary results of this beta version. And I will briefly explain how to read the uh, resulting graph. So uh, the group of participants in this case uh, were 14 participants, um, were re reduced in this case uh, into four factors. So um, this is uh, made by a correlation. And uh, so we have uh, these four factors and all of the participants uh, correspond to one of each factor. Um, so the statements that are located at the bottom of the graph are those in which uh, there is usually more consensus um, among the participants and therefore among the factors uh, because they tend to give the same weight of the statements. In our case, uh, it, it wasn't like super clear, uh, but at least the statement three and five, uh, I'm going to uh, remember uh, later the, which statements were, uh, are in the uh, left side of the graph. 
uh, the cis chords here, uh, minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two, it, it's it's the same. Uh, in the left is the most di uh, disagree with, and in the right side is uh, the statements uh, or the value of the statements that you most agree with. And in the top of the graph, we have the same with the largest differences. So we can see more dispersion on the values of each factor that I gave to each statement. And what else? Ah, okay. And also, um, they, we have we see these uh, field uh, figures uh, that represents uh, the statements that distinguish that particular factor. So, for example, here, all the factors the uh, one, two, and three uh, have kind of a neutral opinion on statement two, but it, uh, the factor four. Uh, distinguishes from the other factors because the value was different. So, okay, now the results. Okay, so this is the same graph. And here uh, I put uh, a key on the participants. So it's participant three, seven, nine. But if you want me, I mean, this is just a beta version, but I also have this with the real names. So if you want me to, I can put the real names so you can see the, your own results. Uh, so I don't know, do you want me to? What do you prefer? Or I'll explain and after explain, then you <laughs> decide. Yes. Okay, <laughs> so um, in this uh, factor analysis, uh, or where, uh, in any factor analysis, you decide the number of entry factors that you want to use. So in this case, I uh, use four factors to do this analysis. And I did it uh, considering the number of participants and also it was like a little bit uh, intuition. Uh, for this version, but um, there is a, some statistical recommendations uh, depending on the number number of statements and number of participants on uh, how to choose how many factors you are going to choose or give to the analysis. Um, so, but in this case, I use four. Um, so, as I was saying in in this exercise. Uh, there is no consensus in this analysis, uh, although the statements with the most similar value, three and five, are as successful participatory processes is measured by how many participants attended, and transformative processes always require technological solutions. So basically, this group said, like, okay, we agree, well, well we must disagree with these two statements because we uh, all of the factors put them on the left side of the uh, pyramid. And then I'm going to show you factor by, by factor and uh, the statements that distinguish them. So in factor one, the, the red one, this nine, it said in general, the most profound transformations were triggered from social movements and not from academia. And for factor one, they uh, agree on this statement. Factor two, to achieve a transformation of a social ecological system is necessary to intervene from academia. So factor two is uh, the green. So they put, uh, they disagree on this and it distinguishes from the other. And also the four here, Academic biases can influence the direction of interventions that may or may not be desired by other social actors. But for example, for factor three, it's the same that as factor nine. In general, the most profound transformations were triggered from social movements, not from academia. But it's different from factor one because they are in the opposite side. So factor one, they agree, and factor Three, they disagree with this statement. 
And factor four, it distinguishes by the statement seven and two, and it says seven is the heart of the transdisciplinary research is co-constructing the project objectives from the beginning with the non-academic participants. And two is if a consensus is not reached, a collaborative process aimed at fostering transformations fail. So this is just, uh, we can go further, uh, but well, because of the, the time and uh, I want to uh, leave a little bit of time to discuss this. Uh, so I'm just going to show this, uh, what we can explore uh, more uh, uh, if you want. Um, so as because I'm going to show the presentation, I'm also uh, putting, well, here's with names. Do you want to see the names? I'm curious to see where the button show if all agree. Yes. Leon was Let's keep anonymous. Uh, sorry? Leon was curious about the names, if we could see them. I'm curious also. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this is just a beta version, so it's not, uh, I don't know. Um, let me see. No, let's keep the privacy. Okay. So, okay. So, I'm going to skip this. Then, I'm putting here also like all the statements with uh, the, the, oh, sorry, no, again, <laughs> it has the names. So anyway, you can, you can watch it later and, and you can, uh, I can share this presentation with you and, and you can analyze uh, all the statements and see the, the distribution among these factors. So as I, I said at the beginning of the presentation that the idea is to use this Q methodology to during the rest of the project and see these uh, changes in the way we conceptualize these different fra frameworks and uh, concepts. So uh, this is a proposal of uh, a calendar kind of uh, and how to, to work with. The idea is to, well, we have now this beta version, but uh, I would like to uh, go deeper in the literature review and also maybe uh, make online quest uh, questionnaires to send it to you to also have your opinion on this topic and then uh, co-design the statements with you, maybe with a working uh, document. And once we have all the statements, then make an online applications like our time zero of uh, not a beta version, but like a, the real one is uh, doing maybe uh, beginning of next year. Um, and then analyze uh, these, these uh, cue sorts and well, explain better all these narratives that will emerge. And then repeat this, uh, the same Q methodology, maybe each year during the workshops that we're going to have. So this is a proposal. Of course, I'm going to uh, listen to all your opinions on this. And if you like to do this and go uh, further and deeper with this methodology, that's the, the idea. And here I'm also sharing uh, some resources. So that will be all from me. Thank you very much, uh, Patricia. Very interesting. Um, are there any, I see a hand raised by Leon as Wim is standing up and walking away. So I assume that Leon, uh, you have a question rather than uh, Wim. I think it was like a applause. <laughs> Was an applause. Okay, maybe I I misrecognized <laughs> the hand. He is talking, but you are muted, uh, Leo. Otherwise, I give the floor first to Melissa, who has raised her hand. Do that, and yes. then first tell me if I'm audible now. You are audible. Yes. Okay. Then Marissa, please. Patty, I would like to ask, this applies to us as participants, but would it be 
Could it be applied to some of the participants with us in the project, like, like people from the places to see if, if we're really uh, getting somewhere in this transformation, some specific people working in our study places, would that apply or not? Mm, yes, but um, we need to decide that uh, uh, in advance uh, so the, we can um, uh, write the statements according to that if we are going to include people from the case studies. But we can also, like, if, if each case study wants to what, want to do this in, in their own, our own uh, research uh, as their own research activities, they can also do it. Uh, because maybe, I don't know, I'm thinking in our case, if we do not include people that are um, used to these concepts that are more academic, uh, maybe it will be difficult for them to, to, to make this, this exercise. So maybe in that case, we need to adapt uh, the methods for each case study. Uh, it's, it's something that we need to decide uh, and keep in mind while we um, write the statements and the research question. Mm -hmm. But Great. yes, it's, it's, it's possible. Thank you. Yeah, I guess it's then very much about reframing the statements that then are applicable to that group of people and what you would like to do. Leon. Yeah, yeah, I have, I have some, some questions. Thank you, Patty. Really interesting and also indeed nice to see what came out of just the beta version with these nine, uh, with these nine statements. Um, it did. My, my questions are, um, the statement, the sets of statement, of course, is is indeed important. Huh? So it should represent uh, the sort of it should sort of capture the the entire debate on the topic in in the group that 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 you want to analyze, right? And of yeah. course, this was beta, so this was just something that that Lakshmi and you came up with a set of nine statements that 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 what was a good sort of starting point. But um, did you already think about how to? Uh, collect or or um, build the set of statements if if for for let's say the full um, exercise in in a very um, because it should I guess be done in a quite systematic way to 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 have some assurance that it um, yeah that that it, that it that it is an accurate reflection that was my first question and I immediately have have a second and that is. You mentioned during your presentation that this is, of course, sort of subjective, and that, and indeed, I I think many of us, if if we did the statements, we will recognize that maybe if we do it again tomorrow, it will be slightly different. Um, now, my question is: Would would we need to do maybe three or four rounds in in very close uh, proximity to each other? So so maybe within a month to see if, if that still results in the same types of factors uh, so that we can also s distinguish the fluctuations over periods of years from the fluctuations over shorter periods, because in the shorter periods, it's just maybe sort of, we, we can't really link it to, to, to longer term learning. It's more that uh, today it's raining and yesterday I had a good breakfast or something like that, huh? or, mm -hmm. or uh, so, so, so to, to distinguish those two types of, of of fluctuations over time. So th those were two questions I was I was having. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the statements, um, well, it could be just well, I can do it uh, with uh, anyone who uh, wants to to uh, get him more involved into this, and we can. Do this um, literature review, and in, in this case, we need to include not just academic papers, but also great literature, like anything. Um, and I was thinking, um, yes, to to maybe have a maybe it could be another workshop uh, to uh, collectively or uh, uh, 
create these statements or review them. Um, yeah, it could be, or I can just propose, uh, I mean, if we are all going to participate, I don't know how many of us we are now, like more than 30, 40. So I we need to I need to know how many people we are so we can uh, decide the number of statements that we need because there is a ratio like three to one so if we have uh, like ten participants then we must have at least thirty statements so uh, so and I I'm, I also can do this and just write the statements I propose and and send it to you and have feedback from you so yeah we I don't know there's a, some uh, possibilities there and the other thing well I don't know it, that will be like a lot of information <laughs> and yeah I was thinking like if I have my queue like 10 times a month then I think I need to analyze that and have a factor analysis of myself and then gather with the others. I don't know. I, 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 I've never seen that on the literature. Um, but no, or maybe it, from it, the literature, it is known how important that day to day sort of bias or fluctuation is, and that it would be convenient if there is some of the literature on the Q sort. That that assures that okay the, the the details may change but the fundamental sort of perspectives they reflect are 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 actually more robust than that. But I'm not I'm not an expert in the method, so I was just really wondering about it because I I do recognize that there will at least be be some differences from one day to the next. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure how to do it, but um, yeah, we or maybe we just. Do it not like every year and maybe more frequently, uh, twice, three times a year. Uh, I don't know. Because the idea, when we uh, did this, it was during the T-Lab. Uh, I think I we, we explained this a little bit more in the workshop in June. So we did this with a group of people in our case study. This was part of Lakshmi's thesis. And, uh, actually, it's it's not common that we have the, in the literature that they uh, people use the method during uh, different years or or times, and with this we were we're trying to um, see how kind of the activities during the TILAF kind of influence people um, on what they what they think. And in this case, it was about such being. So that's why we have this time. We th I think we did it like three times during the T lab. And yes, we 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 noticed uh, these changes of of the people in the groups. So it was kind of um, easy to to extract like the narratives of of the group, the different groups of people in the factor analysis. So yeah, that's also something that we need to to decide how many times we want to do it, uh, if it's just during the workshops or, yeah, online, via online tool or three times per year. Mm -hmm. Yes, Anamika. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Patti. It was very interesting. And we did this when we were in Mexico as well. But at the time also, I had a question and I just want to know from you is that, uh, like you say, say, for example, if there are 10 participants, you make like 30 statements. Now, these statements that we make, uh, or like as a team also, we make the statements are made based on our uh, knowledge, our understanding, our background, whatever and we give this statement to with whom we are kind of doing this uh, uh you know exercise um so this is like a fundamental question and i just want to understand if there is a way to overcome it so i'm just thinking suppose i'm the one who is preparing these statements wouldn't be a little biased because i would like to probably put it in the way i understand the problem or the challenge and um 
And also when we were doing this in Mexico, at point at some point of time, I felt that I'm too confined. You know, I want to say neither this nor that. And I can't put too many also as a disagree. And but I don't want actually agree to maybe 60% of the statements, but I can't put them there. So so I found that I was kind of confined and I can only say what is been whatever options are given to me. So how do we overcome this? I mean, how how do we make sure that uh, we are able to actually get what they want to tell us and not what not that we are influencing, even if what they are thinking is not correct, because that's what we want to know, because that's where the challenge is, probably. Okay. You, you got my point, right? What yeah. Means? Yeah. Yes. So when we are uh, making these statements, uh, I think it's um, um, yeah, that's the, like the main <laughs> work uh, uh, to really let, like read them a lot and review very carefully uh, the way they are uh, written uh, should be. Uh, not saying this is bad or this is good, but just saying like a, an affirmative way. Uh, and also the idea is to to yeah to try to to gather all the opinions. That's why we we I, and I think us as a group we are like very diverse <laughs> and we have these different backgrounds and disciplines. So the more diverse of the people making the statements or the literature review uh we 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 well it's the better to to make sure that this doesn't happen that the okay so we're saying this is more or we have more statements in this side than this side so just, yes you need to review it like a lot uh, is is a crucial part of the statement because the analysis is kind of easy and you just put the, you know, in Excel and in, in R and it's it's easy, but um, yes, is is it takes time to review and different people to look at them and not just you because if you just you know like I have like a core group of uh, statements uh, designers. <laughs> um, and the other question was ah okay so the constraint on the on the pyramid um yes i guess if you have more statements at the beginning it's uh, easier to sort them in these true groups on two uh, not sorry three categories uh, uh because we have like a few and the pyramid was really short it was more difficult because you only have like three to disagree and three to agree so it was difficult because it was like like a tiny version and i think if we uh expand the version and we do it uh, like with 40 or something statements at the beginning it's easier to sort them in these three categories but um uh yes we can we can um not constrain the responses to the pyramid shape. And we do if we do that in the analysis, in the statistical analysis, uh, there is a way to uh, address that and put like it's not a normal distribution and the mathematics uh, make magic. I am my mathematics are kind of limited, but I don't know how to do it to do, have uh, the, the analysis to it, but uh, you can put, it's not a normal distribution and you can put maybe not just one, the most you disagree with, and maybe just put two or three in that column and the shape will change, but you can uh, adjust the, the analysis to address that issue. But we need to decide uh, what to, so, so it was, the instruction, should be the same for all the participants. Mm. So if we are going to constrain to the pyramid shape, we, we all have to do it like, like that. Mm. Or if it's going to be free and it's not going to be in that shape, it would be the, the same instruction for all. Uh, am I answering the question, Amika? 
I, I think you are, uh, Patty. I think you are, uh, and I think you are answering questions that many of us uh, have. Uh, also, when I look at the chat box uh, to Carlos' uh, comment, uh, the, the idea that you uh, have a statement and you don't really fully agree to put it, let's say, in the neutral kind of middle mm -hmm. uh, box, but that you feel, uh, so then it becomes a little bit, okay, what statement do I find more important maybe that i'm not sure if that's the right word to 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 disagree or agree with and that mm -hmm. i put this one in the neutral um and i guess it's clear to everybody either you use a pyramid for all your uh, respondents or you use a free uh, approach for all your uh, respondents i was also um, when I was looking at my own uh, results that weren't included, I found it interest. What I found interesting, where you say, um, and that's more related to then the outcomes of the analysis, although this is a beta version, that there was a lot of agreement among your um, respondents of this. Uh, those were disagreeing uh, agreement. Uh, so it was about statement three and five, or statement three and six. I'm not sure. Um, but the, the closeness was in disagreeing on those statements. So what I find interesting that it shows to me then maybe that we agree on what are not transformations or what is not important in transformations, but that we yet do not really agree of what is needed for transformation or what transformations need to be. So that um, I found an yeah. interesting element uh, there. Yeah, exactly. And there's another thing about this uh, distribution, the, that um, maybe someone decide that they must disagree with, I don't know, like 10 statements. And we have like 10, just, you know, like a really high column on, the, in, on one side. So by constraining, I don't know how to, to say this, but the answers to the pyramid shape, like, kind of it forces you to to really, really choose the one you must, must, must disagree and the one you must, must, must agree with. Because otherwise you maybe decide like all this pie I'm going to put it in that side. And yes, I really, I like super strongly disagree with this. And and yeah, it kind of uh, forces you to, to, to really choose uh, like yeah. the important one. So... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a thing that we need to decide uh, as a group what we want to do, what is the best to do. And yeah, that's it. Just to keep in mind that uh, these different, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, of course, if you would have a really large group of people, you could test one approach on one uh, half of the group and the other approach to the other half of the group. But <laughs> I yeah. don't think that we are having such a large group uh, or actually in the in during the workshop i remember actually was i think was jaime and carlos or leon also that you did the both the the, the two versions like the constraint uh, figure and the free one so we can also do that and just see what's happened what happens uh, yeah Um, I had an other question that relates to Anim Anamika, her um, remark, in the, mm -hmm. and I think also Leon's, um, in, in development of these statements. Of course, you could do a literature study, but isn't there also, in essence, then a bias that you are yourself academia in developing those statements? So in how far could you also include statements that come from other actors and therefore maybe yeah. also state it in different terms? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can definitely include them, and that's why I was thinking to make this uh, questionnaire, online questionnaire, and maybe we can send it to other practitioners, uh, people working in, I don't know, NGOs or people in the field that kind of uh, know these concepts because it shouldn't be someone that completely uh, that doesn't. Uh, know anything about the topic it should be someone that has an opinion on the topic so uh in order to be diverse but so yeah we can we can send it to other people 
so we can have different insights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, uh, Patty. Are there any more questions? We are reaching, well, five minutes to 4 p.m. here in the Netherlands. I just typed it a bit. I thought it's, I, I think it's really interesting, this kind of methods. Um, and I thought, but it was also mentioned in the beginning, I think it's also really interesting to use a method like this, this one or another one, you know, in the case studies, because in the end it's about, so, so now the application is about the project's understanding and learning about concepts, which I think is really important and interesting, but, but in the end, it's also about how we can support transformations in our case studies. Right. So I thought, I'm not sure how we see that. We could also test it like this in our project team. And then once we have something which is, which is simple and, 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 uh, gives interesting insights, then we could, because um, in the end, we want to apply it in the case studies, right? Or we want to mo know more about actors' perspectives in the case studies. Um, can I just add to what Vim just uh, spoke about? So this is exactly what I was thinking, for example, in our own case study. So if we, if, if we if we do this exercise, say like three times in three years, like in a year break, or let's just not think about the frequency, but we keep doing this. So what is what I am thinking is that is it going to going to be something uh, at the as an end product we kind of impose the way we understand transformation by asking them probably the same question and forcing them to think about it again and again, three times in three year period or whatever. And finally, we do get the perspective which ideally they should be thinking of. But is that really a transformation? Because if we stop doing this after five years, they will they might go back to what it was. So what is how how are we looking at this? methodology um, of you know the, the case studies which is focusing on transformative changes or shall we say that this is one of the ways of doing it but later on the statements for us also has to change bringing their perspective uh, into it like our statement so it's it's like like transformation is not just about them like it is for all so maybe the statement, our statement also evolves with time as we started to interact with diverse group of stakeholders. So can we also look at it like that, testing it within us as well? Like we test it now, we make some statements now as a team, and then we again draw a few additional statements and we try to see that towards the end of the project to see that how each one of us also evolved in the last four or five years after seeing the reality or after understanding the cases more in detail and in depth. Is, is that is something that we can think of? Yeah, I think we can do it, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the idea is just to start with this and uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, and try it and see how it works, and um, and yeah, like every now and then, just review it again, and and yeah, and and adapt <laughs> if we if we uh, see that the the statements are not enough, and we are changing uh, our perspective, and maybe we can include more and make another one. Uh, yeah, I think it is possible. So I'm, I'm thinking that uh, maybe you agree on this. <laughs> so I can um, I can uh, write this in a document so we can review it together and um, 
perhaps start a proposal of uh, of um, this online questionnaire so we can gather information to create the statements and maybe just keep this in mind uh, during the rest of the year maybe or or uh, because we don't have like too many webinars no like i think we are full for the year yes so anyway i can i can send you by email these not the just the presentation but a document with these ideas and these pro different proposals and uh, yes work on that uh, during the rest of the year and maybe start next year with yeah with the with the set of statements and yeah mm -hmm. Uh, sorry, okay. Jaime, you were saying about this one or two preliminary conclusions. Um, well, yeah, I kind of mentioned uh, some of the results, but yeah, I can yeah write something in the presentation. I think Jap was uh, saying a uh, very interesting conclusion that uh, we agree on the ones we most disagree with. And... <laughs> Uh, yeah, about uh, how to define transformations. We it's it's a little bit more blurry for these different groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, um, Bati. And um, I think for that sake, I think it's also interesting what uh, Bim said. Eh? So it would be also very different if we could share this in our. Let's say a, a second layer in maybe the projects that we are doing in Mexico, in uh, India, in Vietnam, in uh, Kenya, and to see if the groups of people around those projects uh, there think similar or differently about um, transformations or transformations uh, planning, um, and that requires maybe also adjustments in some statements, even though it might be adjustments that do take into account that kind of. Uh, same ideas, but maybe a small tailoring. But that might be something to discuss um, in the near future. Um, very interesting. Thank you very much. I think it has been appreciated by all of us here. Um, let me then take also the opportunity to announce indeed next month we have another presentation by um, Christine Nyagaya, she's a PhD uh, graduate for, uh, at Egerton University. Um, and her, it's a case study uh, presentation on uh, soil greenhouse gas emissions from wetlands. Very interesting, I think. Um, thank you very much, Patricia. If there are no more oh, final well, remarks, you. I'm going to thank you on behalf of us all and maybe Anamika or Leon do you want to share any other uh, project kind of message household message with the team I see Anamika shaking her